yo this week i have been very busy so i decided to paint something quick i like to use old book pages um on the canvas so i went and grabbed a random book that i was willing to use don't mind that sound <laughs> anyways canvas book mod podge paint paintbrush that's what you need for this so i chose an old joke book because something I'm not actually going to want to read specifically. Uh, tear out as many pages as you feel you need to cover your thing. And then you Mod Podge the whole bottom, stick them down. I like to give a little lip that'll go around so I can glue it to the back so that it's like, I don't know, covered all the way around the edges. Um, yeah, just stick it down kind of wherever. It's this part, user's choice however you want to stick it down. I don't put too much thought or time into where the pages go. It doesn't matter as much if you're just doing a novel because words, words, words all kind of blend together. But with the joke pages, it's pretty obvious where I'm cutting it off, but I still think it looks fun. Um, so yeah, you Mod Podge. First, I put them down before I put any Mod Podge to decide where I'm gonna want them on top of each other and then take them all off. And then I put the Mod Podge down and you don't want too much Mod Podge or else it's going to take forever to dry. It really doesn't need a lot. I put way too much and had to take quite a bit of it off. So you only need some. And then I just do it on the bottom. I won't Mod Podge back over the top until it's done. This is just to hold my pages onto the canvas. So, yeah. <laughs> and then I went through my drawer of paint and I got the rainbow i found the six colors that i wanted um and you just kind of i mean this isn't like a specific do it this way project this is just a willy-nilly do whatever you want to do project and i wanted to do the paint drip so that some of the words behind it would show up. I considered doing it with a watercolor paint so that it would be a little transparent and you could still see the other words behind it, but I chose to use acrylic paint so it's solid and you just barely see anything behind it, just what's left, what peeks out. So as you put down the pages, I do put a little bit in the cracks just to make sure they're held down, but I don't cover the whole page with it so it dries faster and easier. Um, it's pretty easy though. I mean, there's no real right or wrong way that I've found. Just as long as you don't, because if you put the Mod Podge down at this step all over it, you won't be able to draw on it as well. You won't be able to paint over it as well with like paint pens or pens or whatever. So you want to use the Mod Podge on the front scarcely until you're actually done. And then I flip it over and I do this whole lip around the back. I paint the lip with the glue and I fold the lip over and it takes quite a few steps because you're waiting for the glue to make the page limp. And then as it gets limper and limper, you just keep pushing it down, down, down and eventually it'll stay glued down. But before it gets all sogged through and limp, it's just gonna stay out straight and not wanna do exactly what you want it to do. So it takes a moment to let the glue settle the page around the canvas. Um, pretty important step, but it is a pretty hefty step. I mean, it took up like half the project just to try to make sure that my little edges lip over like this. But I do think it's a really, really important step. I like to do this every time I'm doing pages on campus so that the pages don't tear off the front or something. They have wrappage all the way around. And then when it's done, done, if I was gonna give this to someone and I wanted it to be handleable to someone else, I just put a little tape over to the back edges just to make sure that they can pick it up and there's no worry that they're going to tear a corner or something. But since I haven't actually given this kind of art out, I usually just put these in my mural, the art gallery I made. <sighs> when you're so extra, you make an art gallery in your house. <sighs> it's okay. It goes well with my apothecary. <laughs> oh my God. So anyways, um, my mom has a new office for work and she has no art in there. So she wants some art for her office. So I consider doing something like this. It's ultimately just whatever she wants. I mean, I can make anything. She did say she might want me to do something like what's in her room. It's a dollhouse, um, a cloth, 
dollhouse print with embroidery around it. It's so gorgeous. So I might do a mini version of something like that for her. We'll see, it's just, it's up to her what she wants. But if I was to do this kind of thing that I'm doing here for her, I would definitely wanna tape the back corners so that it's handleable. You can put it on a wall without damaging it. I would also put the backing on it for someone if I was gonna give it to someone. Um, so it depends who I'm giving the gift to. Sometimes I'll just give a flat canvas back like this if I think someone's just gonna put it in a drawer or leave it on a counter or something. But if I think someone actually wants to put it on the wall, it's really easy to make a back for it. You take a circle of felt or sometimes two circles of felt so that you have one on each side. And then you need like a paper clip or a piece of wire or even a piece of string would work. I personally use wire. Um, and you just, so like you have your circle of felt and then you stick the wire like a little loop and then put the other felt over it, hot glue, the whole thing. And you have a back now, but you don't want it to be completely flat wire. You need the wire to stick forward a little bit so that you can actually grab a thumbtack if you're putting it on a wall. Here, I can show you actually. I got these plates out of a Harry Potter loot crate and I wanted to put them on the wall like Umbridge did. These are, yeah, Umbridge. So I put a circle, this is a bobby pin, a circle of felt, a bobby pin, and then just hot glue. And then you have this little lip up here so you can put it on a wall on a thumbtack. So this is what I would do to a canvas. And, okay, so now I let my Mod Podge dry, flip it over, and then I need something to drip the paint onto because I don't want to just fling paint all over the world and I didn't know how much was going to drip down. So I taped two folders together to make myself a workspace. And then I put all my colors out so that I, I would know how much space I need for each so that it, the colors perfectly line up on the top of the canvas and the bottles perfectly lined up together. So I used the bottles as my spacers for how much paint blob to put out. As soon as I opened the red, I flung red all over the place and got it all over my hand. Well, <laughs> there's paint on everything I own. What difference does it make? It's probably paint on this carpet. This was a really nice carpet when I bought the house. The house came with one of those big fancy like princess carpets in the living room, the other living room. And my mom took that living room with the dog. So I put the fancy carpet in here to protect it from the dog. And guess who spends all of his life in my room? <laughs> Uh, oh well this carpet fine whatever it it's lived a life it's have it's had us some damage oh well I still love it what was my point so just squirt out blobs of paint however much you feel like using I had no idea how much was going to drip down if a bunch was just gonna like fling to the bottom and be a big waste or if it wasn't gonna go very far at all so I just kind of did a thing here however much um, and then I felt like, felt like my yellow didn't quite have as much as the others, so I added more. I don't know. I was just kind of doing a thing and seeing what happened. And then I realized my camera was <laughs> only angled down at the desk when I was doing this. I needed it to be up a little bit, but that's how good my brain works these days. So I figured it out at some point. <laughs> Uh, and then I just watch it drip. I tap it and wiggle it a little bit to encourage the paint to drip and then just kind of leave it at some point when I decide that I feel like it's dripped as much as I want it to drip. And then I let it dry overnight because it was big blobs of paint. It needed to dry fully before you coat it because if you coat it while well, it's not dry, now it's going to take even longer to dry. So did this, fling it around, tap it on the table. Tapping it on the table made a, a bit of a mess. I did fling some purple. It didn't go too far. It's mostly just on my uh, white sheet protection thing I made. Anyways, yeah, so. <sighs> I lost my train of thought. I'm using that old robe thing as my towel or whatever getting notifications for a printer I don't own anymore. So I'm just gonna rant about the printer because it came up. I used to use HP print. Um, I bought a really fancy printer for them for work. It did not ever work for me, ever. I tried to 
get help with that from them. They refused to reimburse the printer that didn't work. And after completely removing myself from the account that didn't work, months went by and then they tried to bill me for printing stuff. Printing what? It's the kind of service where it counts how many pages you print. So I had to go on and tell someone, what the hell are you billing me for? You can even see on your end that I did not print anything. So it was a huge mess. And I actually had to go to my bank and completely cancel my card. And it was a big mess. So don't use them. If you're going to use anybody for ink, use Amazon. They have their own ink service and they probably won't do that to you. No guarantees though. I mean, everybody's fishy. I really don't trust companies anymore because freaking big companies like that will do whatever the hell they want. There's no help for the little fish. So anyways, here I wanted something going on in the corner of this. So I took my paint pens and I did silver lines all the way around my ghost. And then I wanted to have more of a pop. So I did some gold wiggle lines too, a little bit overlapping the silver, just so that there was something going on in the corner other than just page. Uh, I thought that was kind of fun. It doesn't quite show up the way that I expected it to, but it's a little bit shiny. It's just not quite as glittery as I imagined, but that's all right. So that was that. And then I let that sit there and dry so that I could come back this morning and Mod Podge. So when you do the Mod Podge over this, it's completely dry. Make sure the whole thing is good. Um, and you want to use a really, really thin layer of Mod Podge so that it doesn't leave big white globs all over it, you know, so that it doesn't, because if you do too much, it'll dry with a piece of a white glue spot and you'll see, oh, there was too much glue right there. So when you have like the paints a little bit higher than the canvas, the corners and the cracks and stuff will fill with extra glue, excess glue. And that's sometimes where you'll see a line of white that you didn't want. So you just have to be careful to make sure that the cracks and the lines and stuff don't have buildup of glue that will dry in a noticeable way. So a thin amount and you're good to go. I made sure I covered all of the actual paint part because, you know, it's a little hard to tell where you're getting it. And then I did the actual page part after. It's pretty easy. It dries pretty fast. I mean, I think it might actually already be dry. That was my rant, my ramble for this week. I, uh, I've been doing a lot of things this week, this month, this year. Oh my God. So I got my permit. Very, very old, but I finally got it. <sighs> uh, yeah. So doing stuff, trying to be responsible. I ha I'm on a mission to be as responsible as possible by June. That's a personal goal. I want to be able to do everything I feel I should be able to do by June. So, on a mission. We'll see how this goes. I have a lot of plans, and I'm on my way. So, thanks for watching.